when Dollar Spot was first identified in 1937, we really knew since then that this was not a true sclerotinia species. But we were limited in reclassifying this fungus by the tools available at that time. So there was no sexual state observed or very infrequently found in nature, and that made renaming this pathogen really difficult. So when molecular technologies became more abundant and more common and costs went down with those, uh, you could do a lot more. It was a more powerful tool. And what that allowed us to do was really look at these organisms at an in-depth level, combining both DNA-based technologies and um, mor morphology, and really get a handle on what these organisms were. And so this started off as uh, probably about seven, eight years ago now. This was a large project that took a lot of time, and it was a large collaboration between scientists at Rutgers University, North Carolina State, Ohio State, and the USDA. And so between all of us, we were able to really examine these populations closely. And as it turns out, there are four species uh, responsible for dollar spot symptoms, or what we see as dollar spot disease in turf. So there are four species. Of those four, two are very, very common and would appear to be responsible for widespread modern um, day um, epidemics of dollar spot that we see. And so those two species would be Clararidia jacksonii, which we find on cool season turf, and Clararidia montithiana, which we find on warm season turf. So those are the two that are most likely encountered both in the U.S. and worldwide. I think the big changes you will see as a superintendent will be slowly uh, label changes, will reflect the new names. Uh, so that would be something that would be of relevance. They will likely all be listed on fungicide labels um, and you may start seeing it show up in extension publications, um, presentations by extension personnel as well. So it, it's good to be aware of the name changes out there and so that you're up to date on what's going on in the scientific community. I think there's a lot of avenues that could be pursued in this area. I think that there could be more uh, work looking at the populations of these fungi. I think this is a starting point. I think that we have an idea of what's out there and where these organisms truly belong, but I think the diversity is tremendous and that there are probably some additional species out there that are yet to be described. And I think that that could explain maybe some of the things we see in the field in terms of control um, in the different seasons and perhaps even with uh, chemical control too. Mm -hmm.